Picture this, a character that you really want is on the event banner. You decide to pull for him or her, and the stars turn gold. Yes, a 5 star character. But when the character appears, it's a standard banner character. You have lost the 50-50. Let's be honest, this happens very often. You literally have a 50% chance of this happening. So now, you have a character that you may not necessarily want. But since you already got him or her, you might as well build them, right? Wrong. What if you do not have enough resources, and you can use those resources for other future characters? Let me tell you, as a day one player, which standard banner 5 stars are worth the build and which ones aren't. Do note that I will be mainly explaining the character's kits and my personal opinions on their pros and cons based on my experience with them. I'll not be going into the minute details as I'm sure you guys wouldn't want to be bored by it. Anyway, let's dive right in with the DPSs of the standard banner 5 stars. Of the DPSs, we mainly have 3. Firstly, we have the Pyro DPS Diluc. How the look works is that he will unleash up to 3 AoE Pyro damage slashes with his elemental skill. With his elemental burst, he will deal AoE damage to his enemies hit by his flaming eagle. After which, his normal and charged attacks will be infused with Pyro for a few seconds. The look's pros is that he can work well with Ye Lan and Sing Xiu for great vaporized damage. Moreover, being a Claymore user allows him to destroy rocks easily to obtain ores. Unlike Hu Tao, he can also pair well with Bennett for both the Pyro Resonance and an increase in damage for his attacks. However, that's where the looks pros end. Being a Claymore user, his attacks are rather slow, which reduces the amount of damage that he can do. The Pyro infusion on his normal attacks, being reliant on his burst, also means that his normal attacks do not normally deal Pyro damage, which makes for a rather awkward physical hit to activate Ye Lan and Sing Chiu's burst, followed by his skill for Vaporize. What's more, if his elemental burst is not up by the time you have used up all 3 cycles of his skill, you'll be stuck with 0 pyro damage until either his skill cooldowns or burst recharges. Finally, his scalings just aren't nearly as strong anymore. He has been power crept by so many of the newer characters. Heck, if you have Xiang Ling, she'll do even more damage than him. As such, Unfortunately, I do not really recommend you to build the look. The second DPS that we have is Kerting. When you use an elemental skill, Kerting will summon a lightning stiletto to deal electro damage. If you follow that up with a charge attack, the lightning stiletto will explode to deal AoE electro damage, and she will deal physical damage only after that. If you use an elemental skill again, Kerting will teleport to where the stiletto is and deal an AoE damage slash. Her normal, charged, and plungy attacks will then be infused with electro damage for 5 seconds. Her elemental burst will deal AoE electro damage. Kerting's pros is that with the introduction of the dendro element, it allows her to deal more damage through aggravate and spread reactions that can essentially bypass her poor attack scalings. Being a sword user also allows her to attack faster, making her way less clunky than Dilu. Her cons, however, is that although Dendro has made her more viable, the ICD on the Electro attacks prevent her from doing more reactions for more damage, and the Electro infusion honestly doesn't last long enough for her to do proper damage. What's more, her main source of damage comes from a charge attacks, which has a huge stamina cost and causes her to not be able to run or dodge as efficiently. Other Electro characters such as Fischl, Guy, and Raiden are way better and will rather you build them rather than go for Kerting, as much as I like her twin tail design. The third DPS is the fairly newly released Tainari. Tainari mainly works with his charge attacks. Charge level 1 will deal dendro damage, while charge level 2 will deal dendro damage and also fire 4 additional dendro arrows to deal more dendro damage. His elemental skill allows him to bypass the charging animation for 3 shots allowing for rapid firing of charge level 2 of his arrows. His elemental burst just deals dendro damage with multiple arrows fired. Tainari's pros is that being a dendro character, he can primarily focus on having an elemental mastery build 
which ignores the poor attack scalings of a standard banner character like himself and allows for higher reaction damage. When you pair him with Nahida and another Electro Applicator like Raiden, he becomes a perfect Dendro Driver to activate both Nahida's Sea of Skanda and also Raiden's coordinated Electro Attack for huge spread or aggravate damage. His skills that allows for the firing of 3 arrows quickly makes him a lot more user friendly compared to characters such as Kan Yu and Linny who take long to charge. However, for Tainari's cons, his issue also comes from his charge attack as well. His charging takes the longest of all the bow characters so if you do not have his elemental skill up, he'll be charging for a very very long time. Moreover, his damage also isn't too amazing when he's without Nahida although he can definitely still work. That said, I do think that Tainari is worth building, especially if you have Nahida to work as a driver. If you don't, but have Raiden or Kuki C4, which allows for coordinated AoE attacks for being launched with charge attacks, he can still work to be a reasonable Dendro damage dealer. If you like this video so far, it would be great if you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't, as will really help me to get to my goal of 4,000 subscribers. Thank you so much! Moving on, I would like to talk about the healers next. The first of the healers is Jean. Jean's elemental skill when pressed deals animal damage and pushes enemies back. When held, Jean will catch smaller enemies and deal animal damage when released, throwing enemies back. Jean's elemental burst will heal the entire party when used and then periodically heal the active character when he or she is in her field. Jean's pros is that her elemental skill is useful for crowd control, especially in the abyss where you can grab an enemy far away and throw them closer to another enemy as a form of grouping. Her elemental burst also has two amazing properties. One, she is one of the few characters to be able to heal the entire party at one go with the other characters being Barbara and Baitsu. Secondly, her burst will also apply animal to the active character in the field which helps to cleanse debuffs such as the slowing water off of the character and also soul elements for elemental application. Jean's main con is that her elemental burst has a high energy cost of 80 and Jean herself doesn't really generate that much particles. Other than that, I do think that Jean is a great character to be built, especially if you require a healer. As for the second healer, Titi, her elemental skill will summon a talisman that deals cryo damage to enemies if it hits and also heals the active character periodically. If Titi is on the field, using normal or charged attacks will also heal the entire party. Titi's elemental burst marks enemies with a talisman. When these enemies are hit by the active character, it will heal them. Titi's pros is that the skill will follow the active character and heal them periodically, which does not limit them to only deal damage in a circular field. The periodic healing is also great, especially for the Fontaine characters that gradually take away their own HP to deal more damage. TC can hence gradually heal off this HP loss. Her burst also allows teammates to heal when they attack enemies, which allows for a more active playstyle. TC's cons, however, is that her elemental skill honestly heals quite slowly. For the 15 second duration, the skill only heals 4 times, once when used by TC and the other 3 during the 15 seconds. Moreover, this skill has a ridiculous 30 second cooldown, which means that you have 15 seconds of downtime. The healing is also primarily only for the active character, which may be problematic if you need quick healing for the whole team. You also need to swap in a character at possibly low health to receive the healing, which hence increases their chances of being defeated. Of course, TC can heal the whole team if she's the one using the normal and charge attacks on the field, but this means that valuable time and damage is being taken away from your other characters. Overall, I feel that you still can build TC if you have no other healers, but I wouldn't recommend her as much. Moving on to the only standard banner damage buffer, Mona. Mona's skill will summon an illusionary phantom that deals AoE hydro damage and taunts enemies. Think of this as something similar to Kokomi's jellyfish, but with a shorter duration. 
Mona's burst will apply the illusionary bubble status to enemies in an AoE. Smaller enemies will be rendered immobile. When enemies affected by the bubble sustains damage, the bubble will explode to deal AoE hydro damage and also apply an omen. The omen will increase the damage dealt to the enemy for about 5 seconds, including the hit that bursts the bubble. Mona also has a special sprint that allows her to somewhat run across water. Mona's pros is that her elemental skill allows for off-field hydro application for hydro-related reactions such as blooms. Her burst, which is where she shines, is used in many damage showcases due to the damage buff that it provides. It may be a bit complicated to get it right at the start, but once you do, it will increase your damage potential significantly. Moreover, her special sprint also allows you to traverse the world a lot faster. Personally, I feel that Mona's main con is that her skill doesn't really last long enough and she doesn't really generate enough particles to recharge her burst. That said, Mona is an amazing damage buffer and I would definitely recommend you to build her if you are going for those huge damage numbers. Finally, the last of the standard banner character and the only standard banner shielder, we have Deya. Although I call her a shielder, Deya is more of a damage mitigator. When Deya uses her elemental skill, a fiery sanctum field will be produced. Teammates within this field who receive damage will have some of their damage taken by Deya instead, while also granting these characters resistance to interruption. When enemies inside the field are hit, Deya will also launch a coordinated pyro attack on the enemy every 2.5 seconds. For elemental burst, Deya will unleash pyro attacks up to 4 seconds. If a fiery sanctum field created from Deya's skill exist on the field, she'll reposition this field to where the final burst attack lands. Deya's pros is that this damage mitigation and resistance to interruption is great especially for the Fontanian DPS characters that lose HP when using their attacks and as such will require the shielding and resistance to interruption to be able to continue dealing their damage. What's more, given that this field is able to apply pyro every 2.5 seconds, it does provide for more reaction potential. Deya's cons, however, is that she only is able to mitigate damage inside the field, unlike shielders who will literally provide shields that follow the character. This does reduce the versatility of the shielding, especially when the DPSs needs to reposition. The downtime of the skill is also rather long, at 8 seconds, meaning that you'll be left without a shield for 8 seconds. This can spell doom for your fragile DPS characters such as Lini and Nuvalet, who definitely require constant shielding to function well. Overall, I do think that Deya is still okay to build and can provide you with some utility. However, if you have other shielders such as Layla or Tsongli, I believe that they'll be way better to provide the shielding at a higher uptime, actually prevent your characters from taking any damage, and that is also able to follow the active character around. So, what do you think? Do you agree with my recommendations? Do let me know down in the comment section below. If you'd like to see how you can create a team to 36 star the abyss, please click the video on the right. If you would like to see my other Genshin Impact videos, please click the playlist on the left. Once again, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!